Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In today's video, we're going to continue with our Mesh Tools uh, run that we've been on here recently. As I've been recording videos, I've been kind of going through the Mesh Tools menu here. And we've been going through kind of the more uh, commonly used tools, I would say. At this point, I think most of the ones that are left are kind of the more um, lesser used tools. With the exception of Quad Draw, I do want to get back to Quad Draw. It's a bit more involved tool. I'm gonna, I want to get to that though. And of course the sculpting tools. I have a ton of sculpting tools here. And the reason why I haven't really touched any of those so far is simply because most of the time when you want to really sculpt something, you could probably use a tool like ZBrush or something similar. Mudbox, for example. Uh, Maya itself is not necessarily the greatest sculpting t tool in the world. We'll get to them eventually though. But today, though, I wanted to look at this one here, Paint Reduce Weights. Paint Reduce Weights. Now, this is a, a little bit of an unusual tool. If you just have my mouse over and look in the bottom left at the help line, it simply says, Paint Vertices to Control the Results of a Poly Reduce Procedure. Okay, so this particular tool is actually affected by another command in Maya. So the Polygon Reduce command, which can be found under the Mesh menu. If we go to Mesh, I'll break this one off here and drag it down. Here we have Mesh Reduce. Okay. If I go to the Options, let's go Edit Reset Settings here. So this is not a Reduce video. Okay, we'll talk about that in its own video. But I did want it because these two tools kind of correlate together. I did want to touch on a slight bit. But first of all. If, first, if I just click on Paint Reduce Weights tool, click it, you see down here in the warning area, warning, please select, right here, please select the Poly Reduce node. Okay, so we have to have a mesh that has been reduced before this tool can be used. So in order to do that, I'm just going to kind of move these over. I'm going to just simply I'm gonna create a cube just to demonstrate this. I'll scale it up. And I need to reduce it, so that means the polygons need to be a little more dense so that I can reduce them down to be less dense, right? So just to have a polygon shape here, I'm going to bevel it, edit mesh, bevel. I'll increase the segments maybe a couple times, decrease the fraction so it's not quite so uh, large of a bevel, so something like this. And then I'll go to mesh, smooth, and I'll increase the divisions you know, several times just to get a really nice, dense mesh here. So something like this I think would be fine. So if I go to uh, display, heads up display, poly count. This will tell me that this particular cube has almost 50,000 triangles or 25,000 faces. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and delete history. Freeze transformations. So we have this, this cube here is very dense. I'll hide the grid. So I'm going to do a reduce command. Okay. I'm not really going to worry about uh, the options except for I will show you a couple things. But if I click reduce, okay, I get this up here, this poly reduce. Reduction method is percentage based. I can also choose, I can choose like a certain number of vertices or a certain number of triangles but I'll stick with percentage, and the default percentage is 50%. So looking again at my triangle count now, you'll see it's almost 25,000 versus the 50,000 it was. So about 50% of the triangles have been reduced. Okay, great. Now, let's say I want to use my Paint Reduce Weights tool over here. If I click it, oops, warning, or error, actually, this is a red, red uh, message, meaning as an error, cannot paint weights on the Reduce Mesh. Turn Keep Original On in the reduce options and paint weights. So I actually made a mistake, not really, I was just showing you, that you have to, in the reduce options to begin with, make sure you turn keep original on in order to use this tool. So there's lots of little hoops to have to jump through. I'm gonna do a few times to, before the uh, reduction. Okay, here we are, so back, back to the smooth. So now I'm going to reduce, but this time I'm gonna check keep original. Percentage is still here, percentage number is 50%, and I'll just hit reduce. Oh, now we have two cubes. Okay, so keep original. You'll notice in the outliner I have P cube 1, which is my original cube that I have selected, and here's P cube 2. Okay, so it creates a duplicate of your original cube, 
and reduces it. So P cube one, okay, I'm just gonna name this one original cube or original or OG. Has 50, around 50,000 triangles. P cube two is reduced, we'll say that, almost 25,000, so about 50%. All right, now we're getting somewhere. So with these, the, these poly counts are uh, gonna be important and also just looking at how, how reduced it is visually. So even though this is 50% reduced, it's still relatively dense, right? And this one's, even though it's got half the triangles as the original one. Okay, so with this in mind, now I'm gonna close the mesh menu here that I have pulled off. And here's my mesh tools menu. I'll click on the reduced cube and I'll go to paint, reduce, weights. Now go to the options. And here you'll notice when the options are turned on, and right now I have a display where it says show wireframes turned off. I'll turn that back on because I did change that. I'll click reset tool even. So here, what happens is the original cube turns black. I have my, this red circular brush that appears that only appears when I'm over the black cube, the original cube, not the reduced one. Okay. So this is a common painting tool in Maya. Several different commands and tools will use the same tool for painting. Um, you'll notice it when you're painting weights for skinning characters and how joints and bones influence vertices, for example. You'll use the same sort of tool. So the biggest things, I'm not gonna go through every single thing on this, this tool here, just a lot of stuff here, but the basic things to understand is you have a brush, right? If I hold down the B key, B as in boy, left click and drag, I can resize my brush. Okay. Let go of B. Now my brush is huge. I'll put it back down. Okay, and this also, you can see here, the radius slider up the top is what is actually being controlled by that. So you can do, use that radius slider up here to also control the scale of your brush. There's opacity. So when I do my paint strokes, you'll see if I, as I draw on here, and it's very slow to update on my computer. You'll notice it kind of slows down as it goes through. Uh, but essentially, where I'm, I'm painting this stroke of white over the black, I'll undo that with the Z key. But if I have my opacity and put my opacity down to say 30% or so, you'll see it's much more subdued. Now, when working with this tool, depending on what you're doing, I suggest keeping the opacity all the way up. And I'll show you why in a second. So with opacity all the way up, I get a full white paint stroke. And then we have some different profiles. So if you want kind of a, a square brush, okay, I'll do that. And then we have a few different profile brushes. Like this one has a much uh, smaller kind of soft middle to the brush stroke. I'll do that. Versus this one, which goes all the way to the outer edges of the brush, of the uh, radius of the brush. Now you'll notice that the paint strokes are not perfectly circular. Like I can just click here and it's got this kind of jagged shape to it. That's because I'm painting vertices, I'm painting vertexes. So if my cube was much more dense, like I had just so many vertices you couldn't even see them, then maybe my paint strokes would be more smooth. But right now what's happening is each vertex is getting painted. And so that's why you're have a line going across from this point to that point, and down, down, and across to here, and so on. Kind of like pixel art if you are into that kind of uh, art style. All right, I'm going to undo now and remove that stroke. Okay, so that's essentially up here. And then down here we have paint attributes. And so here it's showing us, hey, we're painting the vertex weights of the poly reduce command. That's what it's essentially saying. And then we have a couple paint operations. Now, not all these paint operations are gonna be useful for what we're doing here right now, because this, again, like I said, this tool is used for many different commands in Maya. And so, like for example, using scale, isn't really gonna do much for us. Replace, add, and smooth will work for us though. So, let me kind of explain exactly what's happening here. I'm actually, what I'm gonna do is turn on wireframe on shaded, just so you can see the reduced cube over here. So right now, the original cube is painted all in black. So what that essentially means is that the paint weights tool is having no effect on the reduction. There's no change. If I start painting white on here though, you'll notice the reduced cube over here begins to kind of shift around and change based on how I'm painting on the original cube. 
And again, it's a little bit slow to update. Okay, I'm kind of panning through here. All right. So I, I painted some strokes there. And you see that like, where I painted white here, the density is much higher here versus down here is much lower. So essentially what's happening here is that I'm, wherever you paint white, you're essentially saying that the reduction over here is less. Okay, so you're essentially, for example, let's say you uh, want to reduce an object that's a bit more complicated than a cube, and maybe you're losing the shape you were trying to keep. Let's say, let's say maybe it's like a uh, organic shape, like a tree trunk. And when you reduce it, the tree trunk starts to kind of squish and, and move and mangle itself in a way you don't want. Well, you can use this tool, make sure you have keep original turned on when you reduce, and you can paint where you want the shape to kind of stay closer to the original shape. Okay, So you're kind of trying to pinpoint where the reduction happens versus where you don't want it to happen. So that's what's happening when I'm painting on here, and we can demonstrate that more here in a second. So back over here, these paint operations, right here, this is a replace. That's what we're doing right now. You see a little R in the middle of my brush saying replace. There's also add. That little R changes to an A. And then there's smooth with a little SM on my brush. If I do smooth, you'll notice it kind of smooths the paint stroke where I'm painting through here. So replace and add are primarily what we're going to be looking at. Smooth doesn't really do a whole lot with this particular function because, again, it's, it's a per vertex thing. So smoothing the vertex may make a little bit of a change, especially if your mesh is very dense. Maybe that smoothing is going to be needed. For this particular mesh, even though it is dense, it's not nearly as dense as it could be. It could be millions of polygons for like a ZBrush sculpted model or something. And therefore, the, the smoothing isn't having as much effect on this particular model. All right, so replace and add. What this means is where I'm painting, let's say, for example, wherever I'm painting with replace, it's actually going to change the value of the vertex where I'm painting to be the new value versus add. Let's say my here's down here is the painting, the value that I'm painting is all the way up to one. Let's say if I paint with a value of zero, okay, that essentially means I'm going to paint with black. But with add turned on, it's adding zero to the current value. And right now the current value for these white areas is one. White means all the way up to one. Black means all the way down to zero. So by using the add operation, and adding 0 to 1, it means it's 1, right? 1 plus 0 equals 1. If I do replace, I'm going to replace the values with 0. So now they become black. See that? So then again, if I change my value to 1 and go to add, it'll add 1 to 0, which means 1, right? So if you do a, a more subtle value, like 0.5 or so, okay, so again, I'm going to hit replace first. So I'm going to replace these values with 0.5, so it turns kind of a gray color. And let's say I go to add, add 0.5, I'm going to go this way. So here you can kind of see that the original stroke is that 0.5 gray, but as I paint over where 0.5 was already, it adds 0.5, so this becomes more white in the middle, and it goes across. If I do replace instead, and go across with it this way, it replaces with 0.5, so it stays 0.5 all the way through. It doesn't get compounded there in the middle. So hopefully that makes sense a little bit. There's other things obviously in here, the flood button. If I know that I want all of this, this entire queue to be a value of one, I click flood, it'll flood the whole thing with a value of one. And then I click replace, change my value to zero, and then maybe I, it would be easier for me to paint where the zero should be versus where the white should be. Maybe that's what is more useful for this particular situation, whatever that might be. So for this, I'm going to actually undo, okay? I'm gonna paint black over like these corners. And we're gonna see how that's going to affect our reduction. Just do this. And actually what I'll do, I'll just go kind of go all the way down here. Again, it's a little bit slow to update. The reason why it's a little slow to update is because it's changing dynamically here, what's happening to this uh, reduced cube. If I had the reduction percentage down to 0%, meaning that it's not reduced at all, then this would go much faster. I'll demonstrate that. If I click on this cube, 
poly reduce, change my percentage to zero. There we go. Then go back to this cube. I need to go back to my, or actually I click on this cube and go to paint, reduce weights. Okay, back to here again. And now if I paint, it's much quicker. See that? Much faster. Because it's not having to update the reduced cube at all. Oops, wrong button. Hold in the B key, left click and drag to change the scale of my brush. Okay, so essentially I have like this left side of the cube painted black. All right, so now I'm going to do, just to demonstrate how this works, I'm going to turn wireframe off for a second. Oh, we'll leave it on just so you can see it. So again, this one is 50,000, 50,000. Reduce right now percentage is zero. So I'm going to go to the attribute editor here and go to my poly reduce tab, just as I have the sliders. So again, if I can increase my percentage, notice what's happening to the reduction throughout the model as I increase it. You can kind of see that over here on this side, the reduction is happening much faster, right? We're getting more reduction where I painted black versus where I was white. So keep that in mind, you know, wherever you paint that black color, that's where you're going to get more reduction happening versus where it's white. The white is, you kind of think of it where you paint white, you're keeping more of the shape where you paint black, you're losing more of the shape or the shape is reduced more. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, interesting and useful to you. Hopefully that makes sense, just kind of looking at it. If I go back to uh, Mesh Tools, Paint Reduce Weights, and go to the options here. Again, it's these painting options. Paint Reduce Weights itself doesn't really have its own settings so much. It's simply that it's using these this paint command that is very common to many commands in Maya to paint this particular attribute. Okay, The main thing to remember is that this tool, Paint Reduce Weights, is can only be used <laughs> if you first use a reduce command on a mesh and in the reduce commands options you have keep original turned on. If you don't have keep original turned on or you haven't done a reduce, then this tool under mesh tools, paint reduce weights, this tool does nothing. <laughs> so it's kind of relying on these other things before this tool actually becomes usable. So hopefully that's helpful and you keep that in mind as you go forward. Please let me know in the comments if you feel like I missed something. Obviously there's more to the reduce tool. There's there's more to that command that I haven't uh, touched on. I was mainly focusing on the paint reduce weights command. Uh, I guess one more thing real quick. If I turn off the wireframe on shaded and in the tool settings here, I can go down here to, for example, display. And we have some options here like show wireframe. I can turn that off. And then you can see when I'm painting, it'll actually not have the wireframe visible in case that's more useful for you. As far as uh, being able to see what you're painting, you can also change, you know, some of these different settings here for uh, how the display of the model is given to you. But that's the main one I find useful is to turn that show wireframe turned off. Don't forget that down here to flood value, uh, flood button, I should say, to flood the whole object with black or white and then painting with the opposite value, changing the value here. A value of one is white, a value of zero is black. You can also use this little eyedropper tool here and say if I want to change my value to be whatever this value is, click it, and then my value changes. So if you're not sure, if you have a gray values and you want to try to match those gray values, it's not just zero or one, you can use the eyedropper on them to get the exact uh, value there. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything. Hopefully that makes some sense and hopefully it wasn't too quick, too quick and, and fast to go through. Again, any other questions, please let me know. If you have suggestions for tools and commands you'd like to see videos on in the future, let me know that too. In any case, thanks again for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.